Some of the greatest stories ever told originate from the greatest achievements ever made. From sporting endeavours of incredible skill and physical prowess, to scientific breakthroughs, great works of art and literary masterpieces from inspired creativity, the fearless taking on adventure to journey around the world and into the cosmos. Those stories are all great, but this is a gaming channel on YouTube, so let's talk about that. What are the most incredible things you've ever achieved in a game? What moments stand out to you as a pinnacle of gaming skill and expertise? Is it high scores? Esports? Speedrunning? Live competition? Those clutch moments you spend online with your friends? Stunting? Wait, what's stunting? Stunting is awesome. And here's why. By now, you probably know what a speedrun is already. I thought this was a video about stunting. People sitting down with one game, playing it over and over. That sounds like stunting. Dedicating immense time and effort to learning its ins and outs. That's exactly the same as stunting. And speedruns of some games frequently get millions of views. Well... This clearly matters to a lot of people. Maybe not exactly... So there's probably a reason why. So I arrived at the obvious solution of uh, writing a YouTube video about it. That's a great idea. That video title is pretty good though. I should start using good titles for my videos. So join me as we take a journey to discover what stunting is, how it all started, exactly why it's so cool, and what the future might hold for it. Stunting is an endlessly fun process resulting in consistently interesting and exciting stories. I love stunting and want to explore some of that with you. So what actually is stunting? I joked it is a lot like speedrunning, but it really is. In stunting, players spend hours, days, weeks, months, or even years attempting arbitrary self-imposed goals that involve difficult techniques and intimate knowledge of a game's engine in order to land stunts. What a stunt is can vary depending upon the game and how far the mechanics can be exploited. The best stunts include creative use of the game's environment, vehicles and mechanics in combination with incredibly precise, frame-perfect, coordinated control to achieve things that would otherwise be thought impossible. That's one of the most interesting aspects of stunting. The ability to wow or be wowed by something you previously never thought or even considered achievable. I've tried to explain what stunting is, but arbitrary self-imposed goals is pretty vague. Why don't we look at the definition of stunting, like from the dictionary? An exciting action, usually in a film, that is dangerous or appears dangerous, and usually needs to be done by someone skilled. Well, stunting in a game definitely results in exciting action, and clearly requires skill, but it's only really dangerous to the character in the game. Does that really count? That's what it's all about. These things take time. At the time, no one even knew you could do it. And that's what stunting is all about. You're pushing the boundaries of what people think are possible. And then you fucking do it. And then people go, oh, wow, that was impressive. That's pretty accurate. At least without going into the psychology of stunting which we might have to do in a future video. There's definitely something to be said for stunters wanting to impress, but I don't think it necessarily has to be derived from ego or necessarily the only motivation. Personally, I want others to experience the same awe and wonder at games I enjoy playing or games in general. I'm an adult now and have been for a while. I've gone through several periods in my life where games have fundamentally lost their appeal. The excitement I had as a child with every new release is long since gone and finding those sparks of enthusiasm seem to have become all too rare. So when something does ignite a passion for gaming again, I see it as something special. Stunning is special and I'd like to share that with others. 
If you take a general approach to what stunting is, you could say that people have been performing stunts in games as long as games themselves have existed. I mean, even a speedrun could loosely be regarded as a stunt. For years, people have messed around in games, setting challenges for friends, reaching for high scores in game magazines, or attempting the impossible. From trying to bounce on enough Goombas in Mario to get an extra life, to achieving a two-minute combo run in Tony Hawk Pro Skater, or completing stunt jumps in Grand Theft Auto. So where do you draw the line? Well, we've already described game stunting as being exciting action and skill, which is impressive. So, with that definition, we're able to pinpoint with a decent level of accuracy where stunting began. Deccan's Auto Stunt Reel by Jordan Lyles. Featuring car and bike stunts from Grand Theft Auto Vice City, this video was originally released in June 2003, and then later re-uploaded on YouTube in 2007. This is the earliest recorded stunt montage from any game known to exist. It's possible and even likely that other people had been performing stunts independently before this. There are various accounts of people recalling an earlier video from the PlayStation 2 version of Vice City, which was released six months before the PC one. However, we don't have any documented proof of this. Despite our belief that the internet never forgets, it seems there's many cases in which data is lost to the midst of time. So, because it's the earliest provable video, Deccan's Auto Stunt Reel is widely regarded as the first stunt montage. A compilation of stunts performed in a game that has no relevance to the mission goals, no achievement, no token reward or content unlocked. Just those self-imposed arbitrary goals collected in video format and edited together like a music video for maximum visual impact. And everybody thought it was amazing. Or at least, that used to be the story. Until... Until early in 2021 when GTAstunting.net, who we'll cover later in this video, launched their sister website, the GTA Stunting Database, bringing previously lost videos, Vice Extreme and Losing Control, Rise of the Stunts, back from the data graveyard to take their rightful place. Both of these videos predate Deccan's Auto Stunt Reel, so the previously held accolade of being the first stunt montage no longer belongs to Jordan. You'll maybe have to stop mentioning it on Reddit then. <laughs> Although unspectacular by today's stunting standards, at the time these videos were utterly groundbreaking and helped spawn the entire gaming subgenre of stunting as gamers attempted to relance stunts they saw and endeavour to create new ones of their own. Most of the online discussion and video sharing occurred on the Amped forums through 2003 to 4, and this eventually evolved into the GTAstunting.net forums which were founded in 2005. Players challenged each other to land difficult stunts, and teams or crews formed to combine their skills and create stunt videos to show off their ability and impress others. In the following years, GTAstunting.net essentially became the central hub for anybody interested in stunting, and it helped foster many now legendary stunters and teams. These guys were the first generation of stunters, and although many of them are still relatively young, they're largely thought of as the grandfathers of stunting, with some of them still in the scene over a decade later. Players like Daffy, Vanilla, Turtle Dick, Blaze, Sorcery, Rainbow, Killamarcy, All Beast, Slayer, Taz, just to name a few. Some are more active than others and there's certainly way too many to list here. These stunters helped pioneer the pursuit and push the boundaries of what's possible across multiple games. Without their passion and dedication, who knows if stunting would be where it is now? We'll pick up the history of stunting and its development later, but for the moment I think it's important we investigate what stunting actually looks like. Usually stunts are performed in open world games with a large diverse environment, an array of different vehicles and interesting nuanced mechanics. That's something that the Grand Theft Auto franchise excels at. Other games are used too, but what kind of stuff are we likely to see? Ramping cars onto high buildings, threading aircraft through small gaps, riding bikes along vertical walls, skydiving through impossible gaps, Grinding vehicles along hedgerows, walls and fences. Ragdolling a character model onto precise locations. Swinging a car through a city on a wire like Spider-Man. These are all examples of stunts. 
If it's visually impressive and difficult to perform, it's probably a high quality stunt. The more difficult the stunt, the more likely it is to be met with respect from the stunt community and all by the wider online gaming community. This is the main difference between speedrunning and stunting. Speedrunning has indicators of success in the form of times, regardless of how obscure the type of speedrun might be. Stunting is so wide range and the direct competition doesn't really occur in the same way. Instead, you've got a community of gamers, each giving their opinion and collectively setting the standard of what a good stunt is. It's like the difference between deciding the winner of the 100 meter sprint or the gold medalist of a skateboard and street competition. Oh no! One is entirely objective by way of a time, while the other is a little bit more subjective since it's evaluated according to judges using a scoring system which is something that stunting doesn't have, despite my proposals to introduce a climbing grade scoring system. But some say that's the beauty of stunting. It's completely self-imposed, so there's no need to even conform to a standard. You can just go out there and enjoy stunting regardless. Some think of it more of an art form than a competition, with the only true limitation being your own creativity and desire. As such, there's more to stunting than being limited to just Grand Theft Auto. So far, there's more than 60 different games that people have produced stunt videos on. From Just Cause to Far Cry and Skyrim, to Fortnite, PUBG or even Minecraft. One gamer specifically has pushed the limits further than anybody else on what games can be used to stunt. Cyper Diamond. Cyper Diamond. Cy Cyper Dim Dimon. Cyper... Cyper Dimon. Super Demon. That guy. Nice. The vast majority of stunt videos from the 60 plus list have been produced by them as they test the boundaries of which games you can stunt in and what kind of stunts can be performed. There would be even more than 60 games on the list if we were to include things like Skate 3, Trackmania, Steep, Skater XL, Descenders or Burnout Paradise, but I've decided not to include these. The reason? At this point, we're entering into a grey area of what stunting is. Can a Skate 3 trick really be regarded as a stunt in the strictest form of the word? Well, of course. Can it be regarded as stunt by the community? Sure. However, I'm a bit of a purist in this respect and would challenge the idea that any game in which the primary goal is to perform tricks and stunts anyway kind of detracts from the creative freedom and ultimately nullifies the awe factor. Meaning, I don't personally think of them as stunts in the truest form. A line of tricks in Skate 3 is what you're meant to do. While flying a jet upside down through a bridge is not, stunt jumps in Burnout Paradise are part of the game and have a predefined ramp and landing area, so where do you draw the line? Some Burnout Paradise videos include stunts and ramps that don't land in the predefined area. These are much more likely to be categorised as proper stunts in my opinion. But that's just my opinion and I'm only one person. The stunt community as a whole will eventually make the decision of what's accepted as a stunt video. However, don't let that dissuade you. If stunting is an art, then you can do whatever you want to express yourself. Do what makes you happy. People stunt because it makes them happy. It's not something you're ever likely to hear from a stunner. I mean, it can be a gruelling and arduous process. The topic of why people stunt is an entire video all on its own, and one I've been considering for a while. The reasons and psychology behind stunting are super interesting to me, but it's far too big of a topic to go into here. I mean, you're here to listen why stunting is awesome. Not listen to me drone on for two hours about why stunting can teach you lessons about life. Suffice to say, people stunt because it's fundamentally rewarding in some capacity. Where people find that reward is a much deeper subject and one I touched upon in my Task vs Ego video, which if subjects like that interest you, you might want to go and watch. That might tide you over until I finish the next script. If I ever get around to starting. 
stunting is such a gruelling and arduous process, what's so great about it? This is a hard question to answer, but like most things in life, it's the journey. I have a background in rock climbing, parkour, and see strong parallels within these activities, both as a freedom of expression and a personal challenge. The satisfaction of landing a great stunt after spending huge amounts of time working out the intricacies and perfecting the controls is always great in some way. But the true joy comes in the story that gets you there. Maybe if I shared one of these stories you would understand better. I landed it! How about the beer keg story? That's a great one. You're gonna love it. But before I share that, we need to catch up on some stunt history. We've already covered the origin of stunting from the release of Vice City video in 2003 through to the formation of GTA Stunting.net, but that only covers the early 2000s. Rumours of Grand Theft Auto 4 began as early as 2006 before its eventual release in 2008. The small community of stunters concentrated in the GTA stunting forums were keenly anticipating this release and discussing potential stunting possibilities way before the game was even out. However, opinions were already divided. You see, stunting was well established within the GTA franchise, with GTA 3, Vice City and then San Andreas, which all used the same renderware game engine. And although physics were not exactly realistic, they were largely similar across all games and offered some level of predictability. With information coming out about GTA 4 being a more realistic game rather than its arcade-like predecessors and using a newly developed game engine called Rage, there was a lot of doubt over whether stunning would be the same, or even possible. That question would soon be answered though. GTA 4 was released on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 consoles at the end of April in 2008 with opinions in the stunt community continuing to be divided. Many stunters were reluctant to make the switch to console, preferring to wait in the hope of a potential PC release. Others purchased the console version and were largely unimpressed. Despite all the contention, it was only a few weeks before the first stunt videos emerged, such as the GTA 4 Skydiver video that explored glitches to launch your character into the sky and then subsequently fall through the air. Full-blown montages started to arrive in May, with probably the biggest being simply named GTA 4 Stunt Montage from Ben Bouja, released on the 24th of May 2008. This video gained 3 million views in 6 months with more than 12 million views to date. He followed up with Stunt Montage 2 in early June, Stunt Montage 3 in late June and Stunt Montage 4 in September, with the latter two originally being released on Machinima channel, which is another story entirely. The videos received a mixed response on GTA Stunting.net, with many singing their praises while others called the videos boring and the stunts unspectacular. It seems there were a lot of strong opinions on how stunting was developing and garnering attention. I suspect then, as now, there were many vested interests, jealousy and reluctance to change. Regardless, all of Ben's videos ended up with huge view counts due to them being shared so widely among various online communities many of which are defunct now, and they definitely played a part in helping popularise stunt in the late 2000s. Despite large viewership of his videos, stunt still remained an incredibly niche pursuit for a small community of dedicated gamers, so perhaps the naysayers would keep the status quo for a little longer. But that was all about to change with the release of Grand Theft Auto V. Speaking of Grand Theft Auto V, we need to get back to why stunt is so great. The beer keg story. To give you some context, Fishy Dizzle is a GTA 5 BMX specialist playing on PlayStation 4. In September 2015, he released Statement 3, a BMX montage edited by HD featuring an incredibly difficult precision onto the beer keg sign, just west of Mount Chiliad in the Palato Forest. The stunt involved a ride down an embankment, a short jump to a log cabin roof, dodging round a chimney and then launching towards a beer keg, which was a curved surface that could only be landed on by striking it with the perfect angle to kill the BMX's momentum and safely remain on the keg for a successful stunt. Over the course of several weeks during the summer of 2015, Fishy spent an hour or two grinding attempts on a daily basis until frustration or tiredness got the better of him and he moved on to a new spot or a different game. 
After weeks of irritation, pursuing the stunt and failing over and over again, he finally landed it and sent the clip to HD to edit the final video. It was the first and only time anybody had ever landed a BMX up there. A great achievement and a fantastic stunt. Roll on five years to 2020 and the world is in the midst of a pandemic. So with extra time in his hands and a new fibre broadband connection, Fishy started to livestream his BMX stunt in practice on YouTube. Several months afterwards, late on a Saturday night, in a slightly inebriated Fishy Dizzle decided to hop onto YouTube and start streaming. It was literally five years since he'd landed on the beer keg and he spent the day at work with murmuring memories about the stunt he'd landed all those years ago. The question occurred to him, could he land it again? So, on the drive home, he resolved to go back to the beer keg spot as a personal challenge and see if he could land the same stunt. Almost exactly five years later. The thing started slow and the difficulty of the stunt quickly became apparent. This was not an easy stunt and would take time, dedication and unquestionable skill to achieve. Over the next hour or two, the subtleties were being worked out and attempts were getting ever closer. But Fishy was also drunk. God, that felt so good out. That was such a good launch. Fuck! I blew it. If you've ever done any stunting before, you'll know how much of it comes down to muscle memory. The differences between success and failure are so small, it's impossible for a human to objectively measure the minute characteristics of a stunt without simply practicing it until a deep level of understanding is reached. Sometimes this can take months. Other times it can happen much faster. Either way, there's often a probability of distribution in the form of an inverse bell curve related to how close you are to landing the stunt. A stunt idea will almost always start with a few attempts that feel like they're getting close to landing, which motivates you to keep at it. Over time, these attempts get further and further away from your intended goal and doubt starts to set in, as you begin to wonder whether it's even possible to land it. If you're committed enough though, you can often claw your way out of that trough and start finding some level of consistency before eventually landing the stun. Sometimes the bell curve just simply repeats though. Well, Fishy knew the beer keg precision was possible as he'd landed it before, but that didn't stop the doubt from setting in. A couple of hours into the stream and he was contemplating giving up and moving on to something else, until Teabag interjected with some encouragement and Fishy decided to stay on the spot and keep trying. By this point the stream had gone on for more than three hours and things were looking bleak. The viewer count had dropped to its lowest point as most people lost interest and hope. Was this just going to be one of those pointless 4-5 to five hour streams where nothing gets landed? To spice things up and add some much needed luck to the mix, Fishy decided to pull out his old custom blue BMX. The very same bike he landed the stunt with way back in 2015. Attempts were getting ever closer as consistency improved. He was in the groove and it only seemed like a matter of time, but it still wasn't happening. Then, at almost four hours into the stream, he had a moment of inspiration. Wait, I've even got the fucking uniform, y'all. I'm sure I still do, hold on. Did he still have the saved outfit from 2015? Black, black up. Oh my god, it's the same outfit. Yes, yes he did. It was like entering into some kind of time warp. The original bike with the original outfit. It was even the same weather. It was a fateful moment. He rode down the embankment, jumped onto the roof, steered around the chimney and then launched towards a beer keg. He clipped his wheel off the edge of the keg and- No way! Boom. No way! He landed it. No fucking way! It was perfect. We put, we put the fucking outfit on. We put the outfit on. We got the blue bike. We put it all together, we switched it, and we got it. The chat went wild, all four or five of us. Fishy must have screamed no way at least ten times. Everybody who'd stuck around for those four hours lost their minds and typed messages in the chat. Almost all of the messages ended up getting blocked by Nightbot because people were typing in caps. Fishy couldn't believe it, the whole thing was crazy. Only the second time a BMX had ever been on top of the beer keg at least on PlayStation 4 from that angle. How did that happen? Magic? Serendipity? Fate? Who knows how it happened? That was like... That was crazy. I... That was crazy. 
who knows how that happened. The first attempt after changing into the original clothes with the original BMX and he landed it. One of the most epic stunting moments I've ever witnessed without a doubt. And the truth is, we all have those kinds of stories. Every stunter who's pushed hard for a difficult stunt has a story like that. There's a time Blaze landed several bangers for his Xbox 360 car stunt montage lunatic, all landed within weeks of each other. Any one of these was the kind of stunt many individual stunners would struggle to land after spending months attempting. Or when Chills basically made the entire fur video live on Fishy Stream by landing some of the most insane technical BMX stunts. There's a time absolute mind crushed everybody by landing on Arcadius from a super bump. The first of its kind. Or the story of the Maze Bank Tower, which was first landed on with a bike by Quebocop. But it turned out he spliced his video and it was completely fake. However, the stunt was landed legit by Dark, again with a glide. But still, five years later and stunting had moved on to the point where Benji actually landed on Maze Bank from a bump thrown in a backflip for good measure. He even put a bounty on the next stunter to be able to land it. Uh, that didn't really last very long. There's the stories behind stunters losing their YouTube channels, or the mysterious nature of certain stunters, and the complete disappearance of others. In over a decade worth of stunting history, there are so many interesting stories. The journey of a stunter is punctuated with failure. Without sacrifice, it would never become as satisfying. That's why it's worth the effort. That's why stunting is great. That's it. Video over. Right? The 17th of September 2013 saw the release of Grand Theft Auto V. The game broke industry sales records and became the fastest selling entertainment product in history, earning $800 million in its first day and $1 billion in its first three days. What did the stunt community look like when GTA V was released? By this point there was a bunch of stunners that had started in the early 2000s and they were all concentrated on the GTA Stunting.net forums, still playing Vice City, San Andreas and Samp, the multiplayer modification. Over the previous decade crews or teams had been formed and players had come and gone in and out of the scene. A few stunters experimented with other games such as Just Cause 2 or Watch Dogs. But the numbers playing and stunting in these games was nowhere near as comparable to the GTA franchise, specifically the earlier games, Vice City, San Andreas and the multiplayer mod. When GTA V was released, everything changed. The biggest game in the world brought the biggest audience ever, and with the proliferation of social media, the stunting scene grew to previously inconceivable heights. But it didn't all happen overnight when GTA 5 was released all the way back onto the 17th of September in 2013. Like landing a great stunt, it took a little bit of time for the ingredients to come together. What was the first GTA 5 stunt montage? Within the first week of release, gamers were uploading stunt videos, however documenting this time period is where things start to get messy. You see, before GTA 5, the words stunt and stunting were largely exclusive to the stunt community on YouTube at least when related to gaming, and they meant something specific, stunts to go against the intentional structure of the game, similar to how we defined stunting earlier. However, with the release of GTA 5 and its immense popularity, the term became utterly bastardised with every YouTuber and their mother titling videos with the words stunts or stunting. Now, this is partly due to GTA having specific stunt jumps in the game, so there is that. But it's also due to the rising popularity of YouTubing as a career choice where adding search terms, tags and spamming the description has become ever more prevalent. The combination of games including specific stunt jump achievements, viewers searching YouTube for stunt jump guides and tutorials, and the way that YouTube delivers whatever searched for ended up creating a feedback loop that still goes on today where stunts and stunting on YouTube are very often not what I would regard as a true representation of stunting as it is today. For example, there are many videos on YouTube that show up on searches which are accidental car flips, experiments gone wrong or general open world gameplay without specific intentions or purpose. This is where my purist attitude gets the better of me and I find it easy to judge these videos. The truth is there's nothing wrong with them and my problem is, is YouTube's algorithm. Another video we need to make in the future, but <laughs> I digress. 
So, what was the first GTA 5 stun montage? Unlike previous iterations or even less popular games, this is a very difficult question to answer. As mentioned, it's problematic to search YouTube due to the massive amounts of uploads related to GTA 5 and stunting, even at the time of release way back in 2013. There's a number of funny stunt montages that came out within the first few days of the game's release, plus several videos focusing on the use of stunt jump ramps in GTA 5. So it can be really hard to draw a line and define what the first GT5 stunt montage truly is. Do we list the first good stunt montage? The first montage with any basic stunt? Do we count the predetermined GT5 stunt jumps performed with ramps? I could make my own judgments on this, but given the nature of stunting, I'll leave these questions for you and the larger community to decide. With all that said, there are some notable videos that are worth taking into consideration. JB Bars, a veteran of Just Cause 2 stunting, uploaded a short video before the official release date on September the 16th with a video using GTA 5 ramps. The multi-game stunt master released a video of car stunts on the 18th of September, although again, he mostly used the obvious ramps available in the game, just with different landing areas. A rather basic BMX trick video produced by Green Skull came out on the 20th of September and a day later Super GT released a video of jet stunts which again was pretty basic by today's standards. But people have to start somewhere, especially as newcomers to stunting or with a new game. Hazardous released GT5 stunt montage on the 21st of September. This was also uploaded to the video game's YouTube channel a week later and helped launch his channel's popularity. Dada, a long-time stunter of the GTA 4 era, released GTA 5 Ultimate Stunt Show 1 Montage HD on the 22nd of September. Quebble Cop was releasing his first GTA 5 stunt montages around the same time, but these appear to have been deleted or made private, and the earliest montage still on his channel is GTA 5 Stunt Montage 3, which came out on the 30th of September. French YouTubers Red Kimon and Mafia Stunting are other notable mentions. Mafia Stunting was producing stunt videos on his original channel before starting a new one to avoid content ID issues and focus purely on stunt oriented content. While Red Kimon appears to have started uploading content late in October 2013. Ben Bouja, the GTA 4 stunt legend, released his first GTA 5 stunt montage on the 27th of October. These guys all helped expose an entirely new generation of gamers to stunting, who then became the second generation of stunters. Unfazed by new technology or software and unconstrained by upload limitations, the new generation embraced YouTube and other social media to leverage popularity way beyond what the first generation could have ever thought possible, or in some instances, even approve of. What? But what about the already established first gen stunters from GTA Stunting.net? Many legends from the Vice City San Andreas or GTA 4 days moved on to the new game and transferred their vision and skills as GTA 5 clearly offered entirely new opportunities that had been untapped by the new generation of stunters who very often seemed more focused on YouTube views and growing their channels than pushing the limits of possibilities. <laughs> Nomad Union, a new GTA 5 stunt team comprising of various members from Wasteland Heroes and other individuals from the GTA Stunting.net community, came together to produce and release Igniter on the 13th of October and Raw on the 24th of October 2013. These were easily the highest standard stunt videos at the time and despite not receiving the widespread viewership they deserved, they absolutely raised the bar of stunting standards and demonstrated what was possible in the new GTA 5 game engine. Red Kimon, Quebocop, Hazardous, Dada and Mafia Stunting became some of the most well known, although not necessarily the most skilled, stunters in the community which appeared to have moved from the niche activity based around the GTA Stunting.net forums and was now largely based on YouTube. These YouTubers helped popularise stunts through various YouTube video series focused around stunting and many of the best new generation of stunners cite them as the inspiration to get into the scene. That said, there's no question that the ongoing reach for ever higher standards is still informed by the ethos and attitudes of players from the first generation coming from GTA Stunting.net. There's a reason they're regarded as legends. Supernova is one of those reasons. A 
collaboration between Nomad Union and Versa Alliance. Versa Alliance were formed in early 2014 and the first GTA 5 stunt crew to join GTA Stunting.net. They were met with warm appraise for the quality of their videos and the team were quickly integrated into the already established community by being offered a dedicated section on the forum. Six months later, on the 15th of October 2014, in the collaborative effort Supernova, was released on Red Kimon's YouTube channel since he was a member of Nomad Union at the time. The montage was miles ahead of anything else and swept the annual GTA Stunting.net forum awards by winning all of the most coveted prizes, cementing its place within the stunting community history. Even before the release of Supernova, the popularity of stunting was really beginning to soar. Red Kimon had been promoting his YouTube channel on Twitter by sharing videos, often tagging KSI. Eventually this caught the attention of KSI who started to follow Red Kimon and recommended the channel to his viewers, which meant his channel and stunting in general was exposed to an entirely new audience since KSI was primarily a console FIFA player at the time. This helped propel awareness of Red Kimon's channel to a massive audience with subscribers, shares and views skyrocketing on his channel as a result. The growth of his channel continued throughout 2014 with the ongoing popularity of GTA 5 and stunting. So when the Nomad Union and Versa Alliance montage Supernova was due for release, it seemed only natural to upload to Red Kimon's channel in order to gain the widest exposure possible. And it worked. To date, Supernova has over 5 million views on YouTube and is probably the highest viewed pure stunt montage. There are many higher viewed videos featuring stunts or the word stunting in the title, most of which were from Red Kimon, but Supernova is the quintessential stunt video and legitimately earns its views for the high quality stunts and superb presentation. I mean, the video was so well regarded and respected that Marston, one of the new generation GTA 5 stunners, recreated the entire video with fellow stunners and revealed it on the third anniversary of Supernova being released. Spending all that time relanding some insane stunts and editing in the same style was a true project of passion and a worthy tribute to a milestone in stunting history. Popularity on YouTube helped drive the rise of GTA 5 and stunting in general. This saw hundreds if not thousands of new gamers attempt their hand at stunting. From this massive pool of stunters, a huge number of new teams formed over the following years. Many of these teams have been subsequently disbanded or assimilated into others. With GTA 5, the entire stunt scene exploded like nothing before. Stunts were shared on Twitter by Rockstar. Online gaming websites shared videos. Articles about stunting were written in newspapers. Clips of stunts were shared and stolen across every available social media platform. It helped launch several YouTubers' careers and is now a well-established subgenre of gaming with long-standing communities. Stunters are not only dedicated to landing the most insane stunts imaginable, but also to preserving and documenting the history of stunting. That level of passion is something I find inspiring and one of the reasons I still love it. Fast forward to 2020, seven years after the release of GTA 5, and the stunting trend of so many new players getting into the scene isn't anywhere near the peak of the early years of GTA 5. Many stunters have moved on thinking all the best stunts have been landed and there's not much left that's impressive in Los Santos. Probably because what's left is incredibly hard and maybe not even possible. Other games seem to have failed in offering the same kind of stunting opportunities people would like to attempt and watch. However, despite all of this, 2020 saw a resurgence of content production from the stunt community. With the worldwide pandemic and many people working or studying from home, lots of stunters had extra time to play with. And play they did. The amount of stunt montages and videos released was as high as ever, and so was the standard of stunting. Stunts that have only ever been theorised were being landed, and things that had never even been contemplated were there to watch in real life, or in-game. Killer montages were being released on such a regular basis, people were describing it like the good old days of GTA 5, Skype calling their team while stunting together. The enthusiasm to relive those nostalgic days was as strong as the desire to land new and ever more impressive stunts. You could call it a miniature golden era. I think in time people will look back on 2020 as a special year within the history of stunting, but that's the past, what about the future?
What happens to Stunton in the future is a hard question to answer. GTA 5 Stunton hasn't quite reached the high points of popularity experienced in the first few years following its initial release. However, Stunton still remains relatively popular despite being a niche activity. There are several established and popular YouTubers with content focused solely around stunting and a large audience eager for more. Many stunters have experimented with other games, but there tends to be a tight correlation between what is popular to watch on YouTube and how many stunters participate. For instance, I perform stunts in the Just Cause franchise, and there's not much of a stunt scene for these games, with only a handful of players dedicating time to them and only the occasional team montage from crews, and even they're pretty rare. I don't have any doubt that if the Just Cause games themselves were more popular, then content based on the game would be more popular also. The way that YouTube and online trending works means that popularity would likely drive an increased viewership to Just Cause stunting. As it is right now, I play a game franchise that not many people care about, and even less of that group are interested in stunts. A niche within a niche, you might say. We started this video likening stunting to speedrunning. If we look at the growth of speedrunning, it's easy to see how slow it's been with various irregular events throughout the years kicking the activity into public view. The same story is likely to occur with stunting. It will just be told in a different way. Individual passion is what keeps stunting alive, and there's plenty of that going around. Uh, it just needs some public attention to help it grow. In order to determine the future of stunting, I think we only need to look at the past, or to other similarly popular trending activities. Stunning has grown exponentially with new open world games from the early days of Vice City, Grand Theft Auto 4, and more recently GTA 5. It's even had a boost of increased interest from other games. Social media platforms have also played a strong role in allowing people to share stunts with a worldwide audience. From forums to YouTube and now TikTok, new generations of stunters are embracing these platforms to share their content. Oh my goodness! Another factor to consider is influencers, since we've seen how strongly they can affect the gaming community. Just look at speedrunning and how when a big name streamer starts to speedrun a new game or category and how that can funnel an entirely new audience into participation in something they previously never considered. We've seen the same thing happen with indie games garnering huge popularity through streamer influence. Although these trends are often short lived, the exposure does bring that product to a new audience. Maybe that's something stunting needs. So I think the future growth of stunting is largely going to depend on new games being released that offer original stunting opportunities, social media platforms being available to easily share content, and influencers promoting stunting. These three factors will feed into that powerful reward system that drives so many stunters to attempt and ultimately achieve what was previously thought impossible. We've defined the general meaning of stunting in a game. Exciting action performed by a skilled gamer, pushing the boundaries of what people think are possible, and something that goes against the intended structure of the game. We've covered the history of stunting, from the first instance of a stunt montage in the way of Vice Extreme in 2003 using GTA Vice City, all the way through to Nomad Union's seminal classic Supernova from 2014 using GTA 5. Along the way, we've listed many of the other games that people have pursued stunting as an activity. We've discussed what's so great about stunting, the incredible stories that emerge from the pursuit, charting the journey from failure to success. We've talked about the future of stunting and what it might hold. What is there left to say? Stunting is awesome. Maybe you're not the type of person that would enjoy doing it yourself. But if you're into gaming, it's inevitable you would enjoy the spectacular antics of what's produced by the skill and expertise of those that do. I encourage you to go and watch some stunt videos. There are many links in the description. And if you do decide to give it a go yourself, I wish you the very best of luck. There's no doubt you will need it. I think the stunt scene has potential for a great future ahead of it. I don't know about you, but I want to see all those epic stunts get landed, participate in the events, and be there when it happens. And when I can't be there, I want to hear those stories get told so it feels like I was. Just remember, 
You're the one thing I can't get enough of So I'll tell you something This could be love Because I hit the stunt of my life No, I've never felt this way before Yes, I swear it's so true And I owe it all to the people listed below Because there's absolutely no way I would have been able to produce this video Without their knowledge, support and contributions So, like a huge special thanks to everybody listed Ramble, ramble, ramble We're all done Go and stomp And thanks to you, if you made it this far Like, congratulations You've got some serious dedication you should definitely try stunting because if you can get through something like this you can dedicate 45 minutes, 50 minutes to a stunt you can go and land some epic stuff it doesn't happen all overnight you do it bit by bit, you build it up one step at a time you go and try a stunt, you take your time, you take your time you try again, you keep going, you keep going it just goes on and on and on it's like this video, it never ends it just keeps going and going and going and going what the fuck's gonna happen? I think we're gonna tail out at the end here we're probably gonna scroll some credits scroll some credits it's all gonna look really nice everybody's gonna love the video it's gonna be great no one's gonna be listening at this stage this is the end, it doesn't matter anymore um, yeah, thanks, bye, thumbs up, good stuff Take care, have fun That's it Like, th there isn't any more